Hey BC, it is uh, Jeff here. Beautiful Friday morning in Montreal. I have the day off and I thought I would do a little video update to uh, show the new stuff that I purchased over the last, I don't know, two weeks, week and a half, and an order that came in um, that I ordered on eBay. Stuff I'm really, really excited about. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, a genre that everyone probably you know, is very familiar with in, in watching my videos, which is heavy metal. Um, anything from the 80s, glam metal, hard rock, heavy metal, um, I love it all. And uh, as you'll see in the, in the items that I'm going to show today, uh, really surprised at the things I've uh, been finding in the bins. And um, also kind of branching out a bit and picking up a couple of albums that uh, I was always curious about over the last couple of years. Bands I wanted to kind of try and... and um, and test out, and, and I'm really, 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 really happy with some of the the uh, selections. So I thought to uh, start things off, I, I just want to thank everyone. There's been a, a, a little bit of a boom there with my subscriptions, and I just want to thank everyone again. Uh, this can't be said enough. Uh, I don't take these things lightly. Um, I mean, no one comes on here and do and does these types of things hoping to. To get a ton of subscribers, um, I, I, I mean, the only thing I ever wanted to do with this was to connect with the people that I that I had been watching on YouTube for over a year, uh, and kind of, you know, by watching various people get inspired to get in the game and, and start sharing my collection. But apart from that, or more importantly, is learning from you guys. There's so many things. I mean, I've, I've, I've said it repeatedly in, in, in comments I've made in previous videos and comments I've left on your videos. You know, Barry Winslow, uh, I'm constantly learning from him. I'm 40, Barry is 23, and everything that Barry shows is constantly, you know, classic rock stuff and bands like Spirit, um, Uriah Heat, um, spooky Tooth, all these things that I wasn't really familiar with and because he showed and talked about all these classic bands inspired me to go out and buy some of these bands same thing with the vintage gear you know Barry was the first that I saw in the VC that really started talking about his new uh, vintage uh, receiver inspired me to start doing a little research in my, of my own and I went out and got a vintage receiver so you know there's, there's, there's I mean that's just an example Robert Z, Maggie uh, Dixieland Farms, um, Long Lost LP Man, I mean, the list goes on and on, um, uh, Boston Rob, it, 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 I'm, I'm always learning from you guys, and uh, that's primarily the main reason why I just, I'm on here, is just, you know, to constantly learn, constantly get inspired, and along the way, share with you guys the stuff that I buy and the stuff that I collect and my interests and hoping that someone out there like me will get um, turned on to a band or get an idea in their head and go out and, and find something that I'm talking about. So thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you for your comments and your messages and your support. I think it's great and it, and it, uh, and it feels good. So. To get into this whole new video here for the updates, I thought I would just show quickly. I'm listening to Led Zeppelin, How the West Was Won. Uh, this is a three CD set of, um, I guess, a compilation of, of uh, live shows from uh, Long Beach Arena and the LA Forum. I, I love, you know, I love Led Zeppelin, and I don't know about you guys, but um, I I find that my listening styles or my listening trends, um, if you were to plot it, it would be like a graph, it's, it's very up and down, and maybe it has something to do with the seasons, I don't know, but I'll go through a point where I'll listen to so much of the same type of music, or maybe even the same type of band, and then all of a sudden I'll, sh I'll shift gears and start listening to, you know, maybe a lot of Beatles or, or, or classic stuff, you know, a, or a lot of British stuff, like the Rolling Stones or the Kinks, uh, you know, and then I'll you know, go on this whole 80s heavy metal binge, and then I'll be on a jazz binge. And lately, it's been, uh, you know, coming out of the phase of just listening to a lot of Ghost and a lot of the new bands like uh, Eyes of Gemini, Pilgrim, a lot of that metal stuff. I'm on a, on a binge of just listening to, like, a lot of Cream, um, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, The Doors. And, um, you know, 
I've got you know a lot of CDs of Led Zeppelin, but finding finding stuff on vinyl is really difficult. I mean, people talk about specific pressings that are are the ones to get, like the early Monarch pressings, which was a pressing plant out of Los Angeles for either like Doors or Led Zeppelin, um, Cream stuff like that. But here in Montreal, it's unless you're ordering something specific online and spending the money to get a specific pressing, it's very very rare that you're going to find something of value. Uh, or worth buying in the bins here in Montreal, they, they, they just aren't there. The only things that are in the bins are the reissues. So uh, this is what I'm listening to. Fantastic, fantastic live set by Led Zeppelin. Um, first purchase uh, this week, I was in HMV and they had a uh, special going on of, uh, you know, $5 CDs. And, and um, I've always kind of been into the beta band, listened to stuff online. I've never owned anything by them. But this is a best of two CD compilation by the Beta Band. Um, disc one is a greatest hits, and disc two is a live set, I think, from a reunion tour that they did in um, in the UK. Uh, I haven't listened that much to the live set, all, although the live set's very good. But I've really been immersed with the uh, disc one, and you know. This is interesting because it, this is a true testament to how, you know, with music, history kind of repeats itself and, and you can be in a band, into a band uh, that's coming out today, but one of the things that I've always been interested in is curious about what the people that are in the bands that you like today, what were they listening to? What inspired them to do and create the music that they're doing today? And when I started hearing the beta band, this, this compilation, I mean, I'm hearing stuff like... Jane's Addiction, I'm hearing uh, stuff like, um, uh, you know, Sam Roberts, which is a, a Canadian artist here. There are so many bands that came to mind just hearing different passages of their songs. Beck, I'm hearing early Beck in this, and, and it's amazing. Each song plays and you're pointing out, wow, I can hear this, I can hear this, I can hear this influence. And I don't think the beta band gets spoke about very often. And uh, it, it's amazing to me how much they have inspired uh, and influenced uh, modern music. So for those of you who, uh, this, is a great, this is a great buy, five bucks, and it's, it's not even expensive online, so beta band, check this out. Uh, something I picked up last night in HB again, this is the new uh, Dio uh, Blu-ray, Finding the Sacred Heart, live in Philadelphia, 1986. This is a uh, full show, the, the fully restored for the first time show uh, from the Sacred Heart Tour. Um, watched it last night, uh, really, really well done. Kind of makes you wonder why they were able to take old footage uh, that was originally shot on 16 millimeter and be able to present it in such a beautiful format on Blu-ray, whereas bands that have uh, restored or claimed to have restored um, shows that kind of come out in this period, like the Iron Maiden Live After Death, um, the some of the Aussie shows, they weren't available uh, on Blu-ray. So I don't understand why the people working on this project were, were able to do such a beautiful job restoring this, but they weren't able to do that with other bands. It's unfortunate, but for those of you that are into Dio, especially uh, 80 period uh, Dio, his voice is in fine form and the set list is, is really, really, really good. There's a nice diverse uh, overview of his solo stuff, Black Sabbath, and uh, even his time in Rainbow. So uh, check that out. Uh, now into the vinyl. Um, the first band I'm going to show is a band called The Beat. This is a uh, uh, like a, a ska reggae band from uh, the UK, and um, I've always been familiar with the beat. I've always kind of liked uh, ska and reggae, but um, never really had an opportunity to buy. Being uh, you know, being that I'm buying vinyl and going through the used bins, it gives a great opportunity because the CDs in the store tend to get very very expensive, especially if you want to kind of try something for the first time. You know, twenty some odd dollars is kind of a lot of money for me to just try something, especially when, it, when it's a band you're not all that familiar with. But being in the used bins, it's a great opportunity because it's not very expensive, and at the very least, if, if it's something that you don't like, you can always use it to trade. So this is a this is a first UK press of uh, The Beats. Um, this is their second album, I believe. Beautiful, beautiful condition, and I'll just show you quickly. And this is a uh, just like a mint mint copy. It's it's fantastic. This is a townhouse stamp in the dead wax. And uh, some of the funny. Sometimes I don't know if you guys look at your records to see what's written in the dead wax. Um, sometimes there's little funny messages that are written in there. And um, this one says "Stand down, Stilbert." And 
Lend us a quid, Bob. This is a great album. You know, this just screams summertime. You know, you pop open a beer, you put this on, and you know, you're just laying out on the deck and just enjoying life. Original sleeve. And it even comes, I believe this came out in 81. It even comes with the original postcard, at least I think, it was in the album. So I don't know if someone just stuck that in there, but it's an advertisement for the for the album. So I assume that uh, that this was uh, all came together back in '81. So um, yeah, really really happy to find this. Next up is uh, another album by the same band. I believe this was their third and final album. This is a first U.S. press on uh, IRS Records, um, and. Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, IRS Records was actually run by Stuart Copeland's brother. I believe his name was Miles Copeland. Uh, I have a couple of Black Sabbath CDs that were pressed by uh, IRS as well. And uh, this is fantastic. Really, really great. Um, I'm still looking for their first op uh, album, uh, which uh, contains uh, probably their best known song, Mirror in the Bathroom. Haven't uh, been able to track that down, but um, this US pressing of the uh, third and final album is fantastic. Really, really, really good. For those of you that are uh, curious about Scott. Okay, so I told you that I've been on this kind of kick about, you know, just classic rock and uh, found this Cream album. This is a really, really, really nice, uh, good condition Cream original Canadian press on Polydor. This is the first press. And um, it sounds really, really, really good. I'm not all, I mean, I've got some Korean greatest hits on CD, which I absolutely love. I played them in the car a lot, but uh, no vinyl. So this is the first vinyl, and uh, I'm hoping to buy more. Really, really, really happy about that. It doesn't, unfortunately, come with the uh, original inner sleeve or the original poster that uh, came with this. And also, in Canada, it was a single sleeve, where I believe in the UK and the States, it was a gatefold, if I'm not mistaken. But very, 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 very nice. Uh, next up, this was a blind buy for me, um, although I was uh, familiar with uh, Just Another Night, I really wasn't all that familiar with uh, some of the other tracks on this album. Uh, I believe this is Mick uh, Jagger's first um, first solo record, comes with the original sleeve, just a mint sounding record, beautiful, sounds really, really, really good. And, um, you know, I'm a huge Rolling Stones fan, I'm a huge uh, solo fan. Uh, aspect of the Stones, you know, I'm a, I really, really like the Keith Richards solo albums that he did, and um, this one is good too, although a little bit different, you know, Keith Richards still kind of retained that, you know, that raw um, Rolling Stones type of vibe, whereas uh, this is a very uh, slick produced 80s uh, creation, and the guest list is astounding, I mean, everybody from... Um, his name, the, guy, the guitar player from uh, Siren Live. Oh, well, here. I'll read you some of the names on here. Jeff Beck, Pete Townsend, uh, Herbie Hancock, um, where's that? Anton Fig, which some of you might be familiar with, uh, plays with uh, on, in, da in the David Letterman band and also did some work with Kiss and Ace Freely. Niall Rogers, um, where's that guitar player? Uh, G.E. Smith. He actually plays some fantastic guitar in here. He used to be uh, the band leader on um, Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live uh, band. So it was, uh, this was two dollars. So it was a nice pickup. Okay, the next batch of records I'm going to get into is uh, just mind blowing for me. I mean, I, I think on here in the VC, I'm kind of known as just a metal guy. Uh, although I, I love all different types of music, um, metal and, and hard rock is really uh, my heart. Uh, I mean, I grew up on it, and there was a big uh, emotional attachment to it for me. And the records that I'm going to show here, to I mean, I've got them all on CD, but to find them on vinyl in, in this condition just blew me away. So the first one up is Dangerous Toys. This is a first U.S. press, uh, their debut album, which is fantastic. Their second album, too, uh, Hellacious Acres, is very, very good, too. Love this guy's voice. Just love the, um, there's a southern feel to this. Uh, I believe these guys are from Texas, uh, or somewhere within those parts, but I remember when this first came out, I was really, really impressed, and uh, there's one song on here, I think it was a tribute to Alice Cooper, Scared, it was written about Alice Cooper, because, you know, there's definitely, this, they were uh, influenced by Alice Cooper, and, and you definitely hear some of that influence on uh, some of the songs, fantastic find. Uh, next one up, 
is a band called Faster Pussycat out of Los Angeles. This is a first press on Electra Records. Um, when I, I found this last Sunday, I was flipping through the bins. I couldn't believe that I found this. I mean, I thought the only way to be able to get this, I mean, I have this on CD and I originally owned this on cassette. The only way I thought I was going to be able to get this was online. And some of them weren't, I mean, the prices weren't out of, you know, totally crazy online, but the condition wasn't all that great. This is almost mint. And it was six bucks, I think. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fast Pussycat, I assume some of you are, but this is a fantastic debut album. I mean, this is a mixture between, you know, Guns N' Roses, a little bit of Motley Crue, just that whole, you know, 80s glam thing that was going on, but uh, a, a very tough sounding album. Um, uh, it's got a, a, a very English feel to it, too. Um, they were obviously uh, influenced by Hanoi Rocks. Uh, just a great, great, great uh, rock, rock and roll album. Keeping in the vein of Faster Pussycat, I was able to nab a couple of days before uh, the debut, um, Where There's a Whip, There's a Way, which is their second album. Beautiful, beautiful first press. Uh, mint comes with the original sleeve. Uh, blew me away, and it sounds amazing on vinyl. Uh, the only difference being, and I was kind of bummed because it's one of my favorite songs in the album, the CD came, well, had an extra track, and I didn't even realize it was a, a CD-only bonus track. Uh, the album on CD ends with a track called Please Dear. That song is not on here. Um, the album actually ends with uh, Arizona Indian Bell. This is a fantastic album. And uh, I think it did really, really well in the 80s for the song House of Pain, but it, House of Pain is probably my least favorite song on the album. There's some real good rockers on here. Very surprised to find that. Uh, okay, the next batch of records are actually records I bought on eBay. Uh, a couple of months back, I was fortunate to uh, meet a gentleman uh, who, who sells some really fantastic records online, and uh, I kind of just buy in bulk from him. And uh, he's kind of kind enough to send me a, 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 an email kind of to, to tell me that those types of albums are currently online. He just listed them and, and uh, kind of gave me a heads up. And, you know, I looked through the listings and I kind of just grabbed them. And uh, he kind of accumulates them for me and sends off uh, in one package. So uh, they just came in uh, yesterday and uh, I'm going to show you what I got. So the first one that I bought from him uh, is a band called Riot. This is an album called Fire Down Below. This is just a gorgeous pressing. This is the first Canadian press uh, on Electra Records. Oh. An old uh, Electra Records there. I think this is 1981, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, 81. And uh, Riot, my first Riot album was uh, Restless Breed. And um, although I have always heard of the band Riot, other bands that I listened to would reference them. I never owned anything by them. I love Restless Breed. This is supposed to be their classic. This is supposed to be uh, their best. So I've never heard it before. I'm really looking forward to spinning this. It's a beautiful condition. And uh, I should mention that um, Sandy Slavin plays drums on this album, also on Restless Breed. Uh, I know Sandy from his work with Ace Freely. He worked with Ace Freely uh, around uh, 989, 91, and I think toured with them up until 92. I think um, he also played some drum tracks on the Trouble Walking album. I know Anton Fig did a majority of the album, but Sandy Slavin did, definitely did uh, play on some of it. And um, he's a great drummer. You know, I've got some bootlegs of Ace Freely from uh, the Trouble Walking tour, and I love Sandy's playing, and I love the feel that he has. So uh, that's another bonus for, for having this, for Sandy's playing. Okay, the ne next up are, uh, the last set of albums I'm going to show are all sealed. This is uh, a batch that I got from the uh, gentleman on eBay, and uh, he's always finding me great albums. I don't know where he gets them, but they're always mint, always beautiful, and um, a lot of the times they're sealed. So I didn't open them because I wanted to show them as is, but I'm looking forward to opening them up and getting them on the turntable. This is Rat. I'm a huge Rat fan. Um, I used to have this on cassette, never owned it on CD, so it was a real bonus to be able to get it on vinyl. Still sealed. This is a first, uh, this is a first US press. And uh, it's a good album, you know, I mean, my favorite Rat album is obviously the first three. Really, really, really strong releases. But this is a good, this is a good rock album, you know, it, it, it's, it's not horrible. They kind of lost me at Detonator, I know that some people like Detonator. That's where they kind of lost me. Uh, Infestation, actually, the, the most recent album they put out is very, very good. Kind of right back to that whole invasion of your privacy and um, 
um, uh, in, uh, uh, the first album. But uh, this is good. I really like uh, City to City, I Want a Woman, Wake Cold Jr. Good album. And the fact that it's still sealed is great. Next up is a band called Striper. This is still sealed. This is Soldiers Under Command. And uh, never owned this. Uh, it's uh, well regarded, I think, with people that are into this. I mean, at this point, I think they still are, but uh, that whole Christian or religious uh, vibe they had going on, um, that aspect doesn't really do it for me. But great songs, you know. I'm more familiar with uh, To Hell With The Devil, but uh, I was happy to that. This was two bucks, still sealed. So uh, I'm looking forward to spinning that. And speaking of uh, the devil, this is To Hell With The Devil, Striper. Uh, this is the album I'm familiar with. Uh, this is a great album. I mean, again, some re religious reference, but when you, if you kind of just look past the lyrics, which doesn't bother me, uh, it's just, I, other than this band, I, I, I just don't listen to Christian or, or religious inspired uh, music. But um, there's some great songwriting on here. Uh, very 80s, very slick, very well produced, but um, some, some heaviness nonetheless. It's, it's a good rocking album. This is the original press. I mean, it's still got the promo sticker on it. Still sealed, gatefold. Looking forward to spinning this. I really dig that song, uh, To Hell With The Devil. Very, very good track. Last but not least, uh, when I saw this listed on the, his listing on eBay, uh, it blew me away because I used to have this on cassette and uh, was never able to find it on CD and to have it imported, you know, back years ago when I was interested in getting it, it was way too expensive. Shotgun Messiah, this is their, uh, this is a, like a glam metal band from Sweden, I believe. Uh, this is their debut album, their first album. And uh, this was all the rage. You know, when I was back in high school, any band that had like a, a guitar whiz uh, on lead guitar, uh, my friends and I being, you know, musicians and being in bands ourselves uh, would take to instantly. You know, whether it was, um, you know, Steve Vai or uh, Vivian Campbell, Joe Satriani, uh, and this guitar player here, um, uh, his, I actually forget his name, but he was incredible. And uh, he was actually playing uh, the, the gem by Steve Vai. But this is a real good rocking album, and uh, their second album is very good too. That one I have on CD, but they changed singers. I think um, Tim Skold, I think his name is, who was playing bass on this album, took over vocals on the, de on the second album, and they got another bass player to fill that void. But if you're into heavy metal, and uh, especially 80s heavy metal, this, this is a... Uh, and this is a rare find. This is a great record, but a, a rare find. You know, you're not going to be flipping through the bins here in Montreal and coming across a first U.S. press, still sealed, debut of Shock and Messiah. It's not going to happen. So uh, this is kind of like a grail for me. And, um, you know, I almost didn't believe it when I, when I bought it off him online. I'm like, I, there was a part of me that kind of doubted it. I'm like, yeah, something else is going to show up or it's a single or some mistake. And sure enough, it, it's exactly what I thought it would be. Or what I what I what I uh, was buying. So that's it. That's my vinyl update for the week. Uh, I hope to hit the stores uh, maybe today, uh, maybe the end of the weekend. And um, I mean, I got my fingers crossed because I'd love to find some Doors, some Led Zeppelin, and some Cream. So that's it for me, guys. Uh, I wish everyone a great weekend. Uh, I just want to say that I've been enjoying all your videos. There's a couple of contests I'd like to get uh, submitted, some videos submitted for that. I want to do Robert Z's uh, question for his 250 subs. I'll just say very quickly, Robert, congratulations. Um, very well deserved. Uh, you're a favorite of mine here on the VC. And also Barry's contest, uh, form your own super group in celebration of his uh, number of subscribers. So I, I think Barry's is um, tomorrow. I think June 1st is the deadline. So I'm going to try and get something in for both of those contests. I'd like to participate in that. So I'll leave you with this, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking in. This went a little longer than I had anticipated. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care, guys.